Hi Vinas, this is Dr. Srikanth from Team MDS Conquer. Now I'm going to discuss about maxillary sinus. So in the first part, I'm going to talk about anatomy and histology, mostly relevant to your examination point. So the other word that is commonly used for the maxillary sinus is antrum of hymo. Why? Because hymo is the person who has given it for the first time. So it is called as antrum of hymo. And the second important point to be added is maxillary sinus opens into middle meatus. Okay. So maxillary sinus is an air space that is present in the maxilla and communicates with the environment outside, mainly with middle meatus. The opening of maxillary sinus is present in the middle meatus. And a regularly asked question is the shape of maxillary sinus. Okay, it depends upon the age, but normal shape of maxillary sinus is pyramidal. Okay, so during the development of maxillary sinus, it has different shapes. So they can ask you at birth, it will be tubular. In the childhood, it will be ovoid, but adult size, it will be pyramidal. And they can ask you which of the following teeth is present very near to the maxillary sinus. During the development, during the development, it is maxillary canine. Okay, so during the ovoid shape, the tooth which is present near to the sinus is maxillary canine but regularly asked question is in the adult so in the adult it is maxillary first molar i hope you're clear right so they can ask you the size shape of the size shape that is tubular at birth ovoid at uh, childhood and pyramidal in the adult so next goes is a few aspects related to the histology. As we have already discussed, it is a pyramidal body which is present within the body of the maxilla and lining of maxillary sinus is the most commonly asked question in your general histology that is pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium. You can see the cilia, okay, but you can see the nucleus at different levels. So it is called as pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium, but it is a single lining but which looks like stratified so it is called as pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium so this is another word that you can add because this is once asked as a question the lining of maxillary sinus is also called as and recently asked in neat that is uh, the volume of maxillary sinus is 20 to 30 ml okay so recently asked in 2019 what is the volume of maxillary sinus is a simple question and followed by uh, this question is given in comet k okay so the dimensions of maxillary sinus is 35 into 26 into 32 okay so the dimensions were already asked in the comet k so just make a note of it and they can ask you the thickness of the body wall that is surrounding the maxillary sinus that is 2, 2 to 5 millimeters in most of uh, the pathological conditions there will be thinning of this uh, wall okay leading to the expansion or leading to the invasion of the maxillary sinus right so the, the thickness is 2.2 to 5 millimeters and uh, it will be thinning in many of the pathological issues that we are going to discuss in further parts okay next comes is the boundaries the boundaries were asked in different ways like they can ask you it is always six make a note it is one two three four five six okay basically the other mode of representation of the boundaries is by base apex roof floor anterior wall and posterior wall or they can ask you in this way it's very simple the base is uh, so the base of this triangle will be pointed towards the lateral wall of the nose okay so that is the median one so this is the base which is pointed towards the lateral wall of the nose okay next one the apex is the opposite one okay the apex is the opposite one so the apex is pointed towards the the apex is pointed towards the zygomatic process of the maxilla okay so the apex is pointed towards the zygomatic process of the maxilla and they can ask you the roof the roof is this one okay the roof is by the floor of the orbit and they can ask you the floor the floor is by the your teeth that is the alveolar process okay they can ask you roof floor apex base or medial or lateral and anterior and posterior walls anterior is by the facial aspect of the maxilla okay this one and posterior wall is the maxillary tuberosity i hope it's very clear so it has six parts base apex roof floor anterior wall and posterior wall right 
done so these are the important boundaries that you have to make a note when you're talking about the anatomy of maxillary sinus and opening okay so the, as already discussed the opening of maxillary sinus means the natural opening of maxillary sinus if you consider this uh, one as a sinus the opening will be present in the middle meatus okay so as the natural opening is present in the middle meatus if there is any, any accumulation of the fluid it cannot be drained it has to fill up to this level to get it out right so that is the reason why whenever you plan any anterotomy or whenever you want to keep a hole to maxillary sinus keep in the inferior meatus so that the drainage will be easy so the natural opening that is ostium of the maxillary sinus is present in the middle meatus whereas the artificial opening which is done during the anterotomy is done in the inferior meatus so don't get confused natural is present in the middle so you do artificial in the inferior right okay the next comes is the functions of maxillary sinus which is well known by you in your oral histology that is due to the air filled spaces they reduce the weight of the skull they help in the voice resonance they help in warming the air and humidification they acts as a shock observer of the skull and uh, they observes the uh, pollutant allergens or any any such stuff and traps the bacteria and the mucus okay a known functions no need to write them again and again these are the common known functions of your oral histology okay few things are common i'm going to mark uh, important aspects in red color which has to be noted down if you feel something new apart from what you already know please write them don't write heavy heavy notes uh, by making your stuff uh, tough to read in the last few days revision is important right so you have to do multiple rounds of revision if you have to multi you have to do multiple rounds of revision you need to focus more on uh, the memory based aspects okay so next one is the blood supply okay so the blood supply goes with the facial artery uh, infraorbital artery and the greater palatine artery whereas your drainage will goes with the facial and the tergo plexus veins okay and the nerve supply is mostly by the branches of the maxillary artery and the drainage is by the submandibular lymph nodes okay so uh, that's the reason why in a few cases of your maxillary sinusitis you can see a uh, lymphadenopathy these lymph nodes are going to have some sort of swelling or uh, they become tender 